Let's dive right in. Today, we're going to be keeping the default cube, so we'll start by coming to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, and we're going to make sure Add Curve Extra Objects is enabled. From there, I'm going to go ahead, hit Shift A, come to Curve, and what I'm looking for is Curve Spirals. Now, I want one that's going to fit well around the object I'm working with, namely this cube. So for this specific case, again, Shift A, Curve, Curve Spirals, and I'm going to choose Archimedean. From here, I'm going to open the sub panel and I'm going to change some of the settings until it works for what I need. We'll start by holding down shift and dragging the radius up until it just covers the cube. Then I'm going to increase the number of turns and bring the height up. Now, the way that I like to do this is usually when I'm thinking about making inductors or similar electrical components. And so I'm going to actually bring the turns up enough that I could cover the whole object. Something like this will be fine. If you have extra, that's okay. You can get rid of them later. And we'll take the steps from 24 to 48. More resolution is going to help us in this case. The height is fine, but I'm going to drag it down just a little bit. Again, we can change all of these things later, and for now that's all right. We're going to click here, and you'll notice that we were put in edit mode when we added that object. So A to select everything, G, Z, and bring it down until it just covers the cube. Something like this should be fine. And S and Z, just a little bit, we want it to really be in view. So if we hit one or three on number pad, we can see from a side or front view, everything is covered, and that's perfect. From here, what I'm going to do is hit 7 for top view and make sure that all of the corners are outside of our object. So in this case, I'll actually hit S, Shift Z, and drag out until you can see I'm not intersecting at all. Now I'm going to tab back into object mode, come to Modifier Properties for the spiral, and then I'll add a shrink wrap modifier. For the target, I'm going to choose our cube, and you'll notice that this has now wrapped that curve very nicely around this object. I'm going to bring in a little bit of an offset, again holding shift so I can do this a little bit more smoothly, and you can see this is why we want the extra resolution to smooth out that curve. But don't worry about that, we're going to come to it later. Now if we wanted to, we could come down to Object Data Properties, Geometry, and then we could start adding depth to create sort of a tube around this, but you'll notice right now this is flat, and that's because everything is trying to project. So to solve this problem, what we're going to do is bring this back to zero, come to the modifiers, and we're actually going to apply this modifier. So you can go ahead and apply it from here, or you can just hover over it with your mouse and hit Control A. And now the curve is actually matched to the object. From here, I'll come back to the object data properties, shift and drag up on the depth until I have something like this, and I usually like to set the resolution from four to about six. Now, once that's done, I can smooth this out by simply having it selected and hitting Control 2, and what that's done is it's added a subdivision surface modifier of two. You can see that's very nice, very smooth. I'm going to right click and shade smooth, and now I have this object wrapped around my cube. So I can hit S and scale in. Because this is still a curve, I can go back to the depth size at any time to sort of control how big or how thin or thick that wire is, and then pretty much that's it. If I wanted a tighter fit, I would have to add more geometry before applying the shrink wrap. Because this is still a curve, I can actually still modify it. So let's say I'd like these two to come out as leads. I can also fill the caps as a side note if I want to. So right now you could see that with and without filled caps, then I can just have this as a closed circuit or perhaps an open loop. So if this was something like a radiator block, maybe I would want that to be open for water cooling. And now let's go ahead and just sort of drive that home by tabbing into edit mode on the spiral, grabbing the top and bottom points, holding shift, then E to extrude X and we'll drag those out. Not too far, I don't want the curve to be too sharp. And then E and X again, and that's going to give us our leads. So very simply, we'll add some materials, and then I'll show how you can use this same approach to make a very common inductor, or inductor coil, rather. So we're going to go ahead, add a material. I'll call this copper. Change the base color to some sort of orange, bring the metallic all the way up, drop the roughness to just about 0.25, and if I hit Z and come down into material preview, you can see I now have my nice little cooling water block coil. So this is example one, we're gonna go ahead, grab everything there, H to hide it, and now we'll move on and we'll do the example with an inductor. So go ahead, Shift A, and I'm simply going to add a cylinder. Then I'm going to tab into edit mode, S and Z to scale down until just about here, three for face select, Alt A to deselect everything, grab the top face, holding down Shift, move and look to the bottom, grab there, there's the bottom face, and now I'm going to hit I to inset and drag in until I have roughly the coil inner and outer radius that I would want. So something like this is fine. From here, I'm going to go ahead, hit X, delete the faces, two for edge select, then holding down Alt, click on this edge here, shift and Alt and grab this bottom edge, right click and then choose bridge edge loops. So now I have a nice inner 
sort of square-ish coil, so it's not perfectly spherical like a torus or a donut would be. Then I'm going to come to the modifier properties for this. I'm going to add in a bevel modifier, increase the segments to two or three, change the limit method to angle, and drag this down until it's very small. So again, I'm holding shift here to do this smoothly, and I just want something nice and smooth. That's going to be good. Right click, shade smooth, control two to add a subdivision surface, and this is just going to give us nice geometry to wrap around. So last time when we did this, we used an Archimedean spiral. So that was shift A, curves, curve spirals, Archimedean. This time we're going to use something similar, but it's going to be the torus spiral. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the number of turns. This is going to be how tight my winding is. Something like this should be pretty good. I'm going to make sure our height per cycle is actually set to zero. And then I'm going to again hit seven for top view, and my goal is to bring this inside. So for the inner radius, I'll just drop that to about there. For the outer radius, or just the radius, I'll bring it in until it just covers something more or less like that. And I'll inspect from the side. So the thing here is that you need this torus to actually cover the inner object. And so if it's not going to work out in this sense, then you just have to sort of adjust until it is going to be big enough. So I'm going to change the inner radius until it covers the whole thing. And that is more or less perfect. Again, we want more steps for a tighter fit, but we're good for now. So I'm going to left click over here, tab into edit mode, tab into object mode rather. And then I'm going to go ahead and for the modifiers on the spiral, again, I will add a shrink wrap. This time for the target object, I'm going to choose the cylinder. And you can see everything has now wrapped nicely around that. Again, I'm going to use this offset to control how far away it is. And if I wanted to now, I could also change and add a subdivision surface, place it above the shrink wrap, and that would give me a really nice fit. And that's what I'm going to do this time. So go ahead, control A on the shrink wrap modifier. We'll leave the subdivision surface in place and then come to object data properties for the curve, bevel, depth, drag that up slowly, and this is going to give us our thickness. Something like that, and a resolution of six is what I prefer. Now you can see that the coil is not fully continuous, and there is a little gap right here. So if I have the coil selected, you can see, just zooming in right here, this is where it splits. So that's where I'm going to make the changes. Now unfortunately, you always end up seeing all the verts here. So what I want is to just grab this top vert. In fact, I do not want circle select, so I'm going to simply hit W until that changes back to a normal selection. I'm going to grab this vert right here. Then I'm going to move out, sort of following up the curve as best as I can until just about here. I'll hold down control and click there. Then I'm going to hit X and I will delete the vertices. If we are in solid view, it's a little easier to see. But again, what we're going to do is the same thing now on this part and grab this part right there, find the vert that we want to move to, control, click that vert, then X and delete the vertices again. And same as last time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the bottom and top verts, hit E, and then this time X to extrude, and then E and X again. And if I tab back into object mode, you can see we now have our nice coil wrapped around an inner core, the way you would see in an inductor or any of the sort of other standard common electrical components that require a coil of copper wire. So because we already set up the copper material, I'll go ahead and apply it. We hit Z again, come to material preview. We now have this nice copper coil around. If you really want this to be a little bit more realistic looking, then what you have to do is edit the curve individually. So basically grab any point here, then hit control, grab the point on the next one. And then what you can do is you can sort of hit R and Z and rotate this coil just a little bit. G and shift Z to move it around ever so slightly. And that's going to give you sort of something that looks a little bit more offset, a bit more realistic if you take the time to go all the way around. But this is essentially the base of the component. If you were to follow this through all the way to the end, then you would add, add a new material, something usually some sort of green or yellowish, I find is what these materials tend to be for the actual core of the inductor. And we bring the roughness down to about 0.4. Then I would just grab the cylinder, shift and click the spiral, control P to parent to object. And now I can grab the spiral, rotate it around however I like, scale it however I like, and move it however I like, and the core will come with it. And so very simply, that is how you add a coil around a different shaped object in Blender. And I find that this works well for making these simple little electrical components, specifically in this case, inductors. So in the future, I'm going to be releasing a set of these electrical components as a asset, 
Similar to many of the others, it will go on Gumroad when it's done. As a little bonus for anyone who's interested in how I got the animation at the beginning to work, all you have to do is grab your coil, come to the modifier properties, and add a build modifier. Then set the start and end frames, and if you want to make this a little faster in your viewport, either disable the subdivision or lower it, but then simply hit play. You can see this is going to coil around, and it'll be done by frame 100, which is the length of the animation. If I wanted to have this work in reverse, I could also have it uncoil by simply clicking the reverse button, pressing play, and then it will uncoil by frame 100. So for those who are interested, that's how that effect is achieved. In any event, as always, thanks for coming out. If you found this useful, consider subscribing, sharing with your friends and colleagues, and until next time, you have yourselves a great old day.